So once in a while in one of these Game Maker videos, whenever I want to make a point about like performance or something like that, uh, you will see me uncapping the frame rate. And um, there's actually a couple of ways of doing that in Game Maker, and it's actually really easy. So because I know that a good 75% of you have clicked on this video just wanting the answer and not wanting to hear about a bunch of weird nerd stuff, uh, firstly, uh, this is kind of the classic way of uncapping the frame rate in Game Maker. You can go into your game options. Uh, your main game options here, and you can set the game frames per second to some arbitrarily high value, like 999. Um, and if you now run the game, you will see that instead of running at, you know, 60 frames per second or whatever, uh, the game is now running at some sort of ludicrous, um, ludicrous warp speed. And we now have an uncapped frame rate. Uh, the second way of doing this, I'm going to go and uh, return that to 60, is you can do basically the same thing, you can do basically the same thing, but through code. Uh, there is a handy function game set speed. Uh, you can set this to 60 FPS, and our game speed type is going to be game speed FPS. Uh, you can use game set speed to also not set the target frame rate of your game, but the target frame time, which is basically the inverse frame rate. And that's going to be game speed underscore microseconds. So the number of microseconds you want each frame to persist. Uh, 60 FPS would be 16,666 microseconds. I'm going to go with um, FPS because that's what people understand. Uh, there is also an associated getter function game, get speed, uh, which you can use to uh, get the target frame times or the target frame rates, uh, whichever you prefer of your game. And this will also uncap the frame rate. All right. Uh, no, it apparently won't because I set that to 60 and I wanted to set that to 999. All right. So now everybody is rolling around at the speed of sound. All right. Fun. So this is the classic way of doing uncapped frame rates in Game Maker. Uh, fairly recently, I actually learned of another one, which is going to be display set timing method. Uh, and you can set this to TM underscore system timing. And this is going to be a third or at least a second and a half way of uncapping the frame rate in Game Maker. Um, this is um, apparently the preferred way of doing it, at least according to Yo-Yo Games, which is sort of hilarious because until I asked like two weeks ago, I don't think anybody actually knew this. And I don't think it was like documented anywhere or anything like that. Uh, classic Game Maker moment. So if you clicked on this video wanting to know how you can uncap your frame rate in Game Maker, uh, those are your two and a half answers. Uh, my name is Michael. I like Wizards and Dragons and making games. Uh, you should all subscribe and whatnot. Um, if you do want to hear me go on and on about a bunch of weird nerd stuff, uh, we can actually get into exactly what this is. So, firstly, uh, just to get this out of the way, uh, when you set your frame, your target frame rate to an arbitrarily high value, it will uncap it. Um, I set this to 999, and you may have observed that the frame rate was, in fact, higher than 999. Um, I have experimentally determined that if you set your target frame rate to some value higher than 600, it will it will just uncap it. Um, I don't really know why they just picked 600. I don't know if when this code was originally implemented, this was just faster than any consumer available display, and they just said that's basically infinite. Um, someone else posed the theory that it, it's 60 FPS times 10, and that might be why they just hard-coded the, uh, the infinite frame rate threshold to be that. You can also, if, if you're actually worried about setting the frames per second to exactly 999, uh, you can set this to some other arbitrarily high value. You can also set it to negative 1, I believe, and that will also uncap it. Alright, it, like, bottomed it out at, at positive 1, but it still behaved as if it was uncapped. And I suppose, if you want any reason why, you may, why maybe you shouldn't use that, uh, strategy for uncapping frame rates in Game Maker. It is because it is kind of, kind of has a mind of its own as to exactly what, like, magic numbers do what. So, uh, food for thought. So, display set timing method is a little more interesting. So, the default is going to be tm underscore count vsyncs. I think this is the default timing method on all Game Maker target platform, target platforms except for, like, two of them. Uh, this will basically have Game Maker try and figure out if it's time to deliver a new frame on its own. Uh, it basically will just go into a, a big old while loop and wait until um, like the frame time interval has passed. So if your game takes 10 milliseconds to render a frame and you want to target 60, uh, it will go into a while loop and it will wait for the last 6 milliseconds. And this is pretty reliable. Uh, you generally don't have to worry about this. Game Maker is pretty good at handling it, handling it on its own. Um, there is also team underscore system timing, 
And at least on Windows, the reason that this will uncap the frame rate is because this will pass the torch of figuring out when it's time to deliver a new frame to the operating system. And when you do that, Windows is just going to be like, yeah, I don't feel like going into a while loop and waiting or anything like that. We're just going to deliver these frames as fast as you can give them to me. And it's going to just, whenever a frame is finished, it's going to say, all right, give me the next one. And that's going to have the effect of uncapping the frame rate. Um, I don't know if this works on all target platforms. If I open up the documentation, it does mention that some of them behave differently on some platforms than others. Um, it does suggest that on uh, certain Android devices, the uh, system timing method might just lock the target frame rate to like whatever the, I guess whatever the display's maximum is, 120 or 144, whatever. Uh, meanwhile, we have the sleep, uh, the team underscore sleep method. And this will effectively have the OS thread scheduler put the, the game's execution thread to sleep um, for the amount of time between when it finishes rendering the frame and when it's time for the next one. So again, the documentation implies certain things about this method of timing. I've never been able to craft a situation where it actually makes a meaningful difference. So there's, a, uh, there's an associated function that goes with this that's display set sleep margin. And uh, by default, on most target platforms, except for iOS and Android, this is going to be 10. Uh, the units are milliseconds. And uh, my understanding is that this function is roughly equivalent to something like um, thread.sleep that you might see in other pro programming languages. But again, I've never been able to create a situation where this makes a meaningful difference. Um, if I set the sleep margin to 1 or 10 or 100 or some other value, it's the game is still going to run as normal, at least on Windows. Uh, this could be something that's more important on different um, different targets, such as mo such as on mobile or on like the Nintendo Switch or something. Um, if I set it to 100, this doesn't seem to make a difference on Windows either. It could make more of a difference uh, if you're running this on a laptop and you're running on battery power. Uh, again, the documentation does sort of imply that using a more generous sleep margin will be slightly more power efficient. Um, I, I feel like this computer here is not the best case for measuring power efficiency, um, 16 cores and whatnot. And I, um, unfortunately, all of the laptops that I own will die in about five seconds if you put them on battery power because the batteries are very old and don't hold a charge. Uh, so I can't really test that either. Um, if anybody does have any ideas for what you can do with this, uh, let me know and maybe I'll see if we can uh, probe this further at some later date. But uh, those are the three timing display, the display timing methods in Game Maker. Uh, what else? So uh, let me set this back to, uh, to, to the uncapped frame rate. Uh, TM underscore system timing. By the way, um, I did ponder in a video about a year ago. I think I was talking about uh, display reset and anti-aliasing. Uh, how come Game Maker never seems to exhibit VSync anymore? Hey. And I wondered if Game Maker has its own, like, VSync handling solution, like, double buffering in the background or something like that. And um, it turns out the answer is basically this. So Game Maker will, um, it will wait until the frame is finished being rendered, and then it will do this to go into a loop to, um, to wait until it should actually be put on the screen. Uh, so that's sort of interesting. If I go back to system timing, so if I run the game, you'll notice that I've got a couple of different FPS readouts here. Uh, there's, there's FPS, which is like 2,000-ish, 3,000-ish on a good day um, when I let the game run at an uncapped frame rate. And there is FPS underscore real, which is going so wild I can't even see what it's saying. Um, I want to say that's it's bouncing around to like 10,000, 20,000, something like that. Um, so I could make an entire video about this alone but fps underscore real is ironically uh the less real of the two fps values uh fps itself will just will measure the actual number of frames being served to the display that'll be 60 if you're running at 60 fps uh that'll be 120 if you've set it to 120 that'll be whatever this number is if you've uncapped it um whereas fps underscore real will only measure the amount of like time that your game is taking to compute a frame that's happening in actual gml and um, most of the time, that'll be a good chunk of your frame times anyway. But it still does not count for anything that has to be computed on the GPU. So uh, the actual drawing of sprites after the like draw commands have been issued from Game Maker uh, will not be accounted for. If you're doing anything complicated in the shader, any 3D lighting, any post-processing effects, uh, that will all not be accounted for in FPS underscore real. 
And as a result, the FPS underscore real value will pretty much always be higher than the actual FPS that you observe. Um, people find this confusing. I wish they would have named it something else, like FPS underscore CPU or something like that, but here we are. It's definitely not a useless metric by any means, but it is not helpful if you don't really understand what it's telling you. Um, so just keep that in mind when you uncap the frame rate, that you're going to be seeing two very different uh, frame rate values. Uh, let's see, what else is there? So, we did have the problem where we are moving around at the speed of sound. Uh, this is a little bit much. Uh, we are computing 2,000 whatever step events per second, and that is... I have the movement speed hard-coded to two uh, pixels of world space, two units of world space per step, and when you do that uh, 2,000 times a second, you're going to be going pretty fast. Uh, this is going to lead into a conversation about delta time, and delta time is something that is a, um, let's call it a hotly debated subject in Game Maker. Uh, some people have very strong opinions about who, what, where, how, and why you should use it. Delta time is another thing that I could make an entire video on, but for, uh, for the time being, we're just going to look at the player's movement. And right now, again, I have this movement speed hard-coded to, to this distance per step. And um, if I'm going to want to have the frame rate be uncapped and it's going to fluctuate wildly depending on how much is on the screen and how much the computer has to do and what kind of computer you have, uh, you probably don't want your game to move faster for uh, maybe someone like me who's, who's got a uh, fancy, fairly recent CPU in there versus someone who's running this on like an older laptop. Anyway, so the extremely short version of using Delta Time. So GameMaker has... A built-in variable which is called delta time and this is the number of microseconds since the last step event has been computed um i do realize that it's a little bit confusing why some values in game maker use milliseconds or one one thousandth of a second and some values in game maker use microseconds or one one millionth of a second um it would have been nice if they could have picked one denomination and stuck with it but here we are uh so i'm going to the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to turn delta time into seconds by dividing it by one uh, 1 million, like this. And I'm going to call this var time step equals this. Uh, so the um, the number of seconds that have elapsed since the last frame. And the reason that I want it in seconds is just because it makes, it makes the math easier. Um, it makes the numbers easier. So if I want, like, a base speed of moving two units of world space per step, and I, I wanted the, like, base speed of the game to be 60 frames per second, I'm going to want uh, the movement speed to be 120 units per second and since I don't know exactly how many step events per second I'm getting when I have an uncapped frame rate I'm going to be taking the time step uh, in like inverse seconds and just multiplying that by our target movement speed and that is going to allow at least the player to move around at more or less the same speed that we were moving before um, our animations are still looking like we had maybe a couple too many shots of espresso this morning because I did not um, I did not make use of this time step when it came to animation speed. Uh, our NPCs are still rolling around at the speed of sound because we have not uh, made use of our delta time to time step for their speeds either. Um, anything that's using like an alarm or any like built-in game maker particle system will look like utter nonsense if I just run it like this because those are all going to be computed in frames and not in uh, seconds or a, a time step or anything like that. Um, Linear motion isn't too bad. Uh, it's kind of a pain to work into your game if you've already set up your game to work at a fixed frame rate and you want to insert a, a delta time time step like this to every object in your game, but you can just mathematically work it out uh, when it comes to linear motion. When it comes to things like parabolic motion or exponential decay, like a, a lerp over time or something like that, delta time gets a lot more complicated and that's something that I would want to make an entire video addressing. Um, for things like that, you start to get into there are no perfect solutions, only like compromises territory. Hey. But uh, I think those are all the things I wanted to really talk about when it came to uncapping frame rates in Game Maker. So um, not only how to do it, but things that you want to consider if you do. And I think I'm going to end this off here. So my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I like to make videos on weird stuff you can do in Game Maker. So if you want to see more of this, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Uh, you should all go check out Wizard X and the Lost Hat, which is one of the things, uh, one of the games that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Link to the Steam page can be found down below. I hope you all enjoyed that, 
and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Square Crow, Spy Dog Games, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Game Art Indie, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.